Hey guys, hope you all are doing wonderful today. We're continuing on in the book of Luke with chapter 17. More good stuff to look at today in this gospel. Glad you're with us. Let's go ahead and get into it. You're watching the Bible Vlog. <music> chapter off, Jesus puts out a warning right away about causing other people to stumble in sin, especially people who are younger or less mature than us. Now this might sound obvious to us, yet it baffles me constantly at how many people think that this kind of thing is funny or entertaining to put other people in harm's way. You know, I hear people joke around about trying to get a friend of theirs drunk, or I've seen videos online of people even laughing when they're teaching little kids a swear word. Now if you don't know Jesus, I still think you should know better, but when you claim to be a Christian and you are willfully causing people to sin like this? Boy, does Jesus have a warning for you. Look at verses 1 through 4. Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Now the word offense here actually means stumbling block. It's basically the idea of putting something in someone's path that will cause them to sin. Now Jesus also points out that we should be very quick to forgive people, but also make sure that you're aware of what effect your actions are having on others. Guys, let me tell you this. No one sins in a vacuum. Other people are always affected. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit and look at an interesting story about what happens with Jesus and 10 guys who have leprosy. Now, for those of you who don't know, leprosy was a horrible disease that caused people's bodies to just slowly rot away. It it was very contagious, but also greatly feared. So if you had leprosy, then you had to live with others who had the same disease away from everybody else. Obviously a horrible thing that nobody wanted to catch. Well, Jesus walks into a village and these 10 guys are standing a ways off and they start shouting to Jesus. So look at what happens here. Go to verses 12 through 19. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was was as they went that they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the other nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Now no doubt these guys were ecstatic about what happened to them, but did you notice that there was something really interesting that happened here? These ten lepers were were not healed immediately. They were healed as they went. See again, faith without works is dead. You have to put action to your faith. Now when Jesus told these 10 lepers to go show themselves to the priests, honestly, they could have stood there and been like, why? Nothing's changed. I still have leprosy. But instead they obeyed and they were healed as they were taking action. Let me encourage you in this today. Just because you haven't seen your miracle yet, don't quit taking action. Just because breakthrough hasn't come to your particular situation yet, don't stop having faith in what God has promised. Listen, if every single thing that we ask God for came to us immediately, then there would be no need to trust God or have faith. God works in steps, but not in the steps that he is taking, but in the steps that we are taking. All right, one last passage to look at here, and this is Jesus talking about what the times will be like when he returns. Now, when we refer to the second coming of Jesus, this is what we are talking about. Now, in this moment, Jesus describes what the setting will be like during his return and also how things will play out. So first, go to verses 26 through 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planned, they built. But on that day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now skip down to verses 34 through 36. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. So just like the times of Noah, everything was going along normally until it started to rain. Or even before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, everything was normal, but then fire started falling. It will be the exact same thing when Jesus returns. No one will be expecting it when it happens. Now the last verse about some people being taken and others left may refer 
refer to the rapture of the church, and certainly many people believe that it does. Now, this starts to go down a road where Christians have different viewpoints on how the return of Christ will play out. Will only Christians be taken and you have millions of people disappearing from the planet? Will Jesus return and there's no rapture and everyone is judged at once? The truth is this, nobody knows for sure. Especially when it comes to eschatology, which is the theology regarding the final events of the earth, there's a lot of symbolism and multiple meanings to different verses. So without going down that road too far, since we haven't hit the book of Revelation yet, let me just say that more than anything else, this speaks to a decisive separation when Jesus returns. One day every knee will bow, but it's better to make the choice to do that now instead of realizing it once it's too late. All right, boys and girls, that is going to do it for us today with chapter 17. Always amazing to me how timeless the teachings of Jesus are even for us today. All right, we'll come back tomorrow for chapter 18, more good stuff from the Gospel of Luke. Hope you all have a beautiful day and thank you so much for joining us. Cannot wait to see you tomorrow. Until then, be good and I will see you tomorrow.